Uh, it's a big numbers game, and so merely hiring more people to handle claims uh, won't let us get ahead of the growing surge, let alone cleave the size of the backlog, anything over 125 days. So we must automate. We know that, and we thank all of you for supporting our automation efforts. We must automate and fast. The 2012 budget uh, request for VBA is $2 billion, an increase of $330 million, or about a 20% increase over the 2010 budget for VBA, or, or Benefits Administration. These funds are needed to get us out of paper and into electronic processing, where we should have gone years ago. So we're playing catch up. But even as we automate, we must also increase accuracy as, as uh, Wally mentioned. Today, that accuracy rate of ours uh, is 84% on the average number of claims we produce. Now, you know, if you're a Major League Baseball player, batting 800 is pretty darn good. Well, we're not, we're not, we're not baseball players. This is the VA, 84% isn't good enough. And so as we automate, our target is to have a 98% accuracy rate because when you put rules engines in place, you don't have to worry about the mistakes or the lack of experience on youngsters. All of that experience has been calculated into the engine and it produces you the kinds of income, uh, outcomes we're looking for. We're at that crossover point. We're investing in uh, information technology. But as that comes on, we still have to hire a few people to keep us in the, in the game until these tools next year uh, get into place and then begin to give us momentum uh, automa automation-wise. So in the short term, this budget also increases about 716 full-time employees, even as we're making far more significant investments in IT. And then we'll see that crossover point uh, in which uh, you know, our hiring and people will begin to end and our increased uh, investments in autom automation will take off. The budget request also supports expanded eligibility for post-9-11 GI Bill benefits by including non-college degree programs such as on-the-job training, flight training, correspondence courses. Into this category, we're finally able to get vocational training. Folks want to go to work in the trades, in carpentry, in uh, you know, plumbing work, uh, electricity. Uh, we have now the opportunity to put them through that kind of professional training and get them into the workforce. And the intent here is not to turn out an apprentice, but somebody higher up on the pay scale and experience scale that would be comparable to giving a college degree to someone else. So that's uh, part of the design here. It also allows us to fully automate the payment process to speed tuition and housing payments to all eligible veterans by the end of this calendar year. Through October 2010, VA issued over $7 billion in tuition, housing, and stipends for more than 423,000 student veterans and eligible family members. This program is working. This program is working. My next focus in the GI Bill process will be to start looking at graduation rates. As I tell youngsters when I go around, if you don't graduate, there's no payoff to you, to the country, or to this program. And so, if I sound like your dad, I am. I'm paying your bill, graduate. You figure it out, put your heads together, all of you. Uh, you may not be a unit, there's no company commander first sergeant here, but you are a unit. You have shared experience. You know how to put these kinds of uh, activities together. And if Shinseki isn't going to class, first hour class every morning, somebody go down there and kick him out of the sack. We know where this is gonna end up. I expect you to graduate, and I'll be checking graduation rates. Things get quiet in the room when I say that. <laughs> the budget request also supports expanded eligibility uh, to these folks. And as I said, uh, graduation is the next major focus here. Mental health. The budget request seeks nearly $51 billion for medical care, including $6.2 billion for critically required mental health programs, $68 million directly for our suicide pre prevention initiative alone. Uh, over the coming uh, weeks, though, we'll be transitioning from calling our National Suicide uh, Prevention Hotline uh, from that term 
and we'll begin referring to this in a, a much broader context, uh, and the transition will move towards calling it a crisis, uh, a crisis line. Uh, we've gotten some feedback that there are some who won't call when they need help because somehow the word uh, suicide is a turnoff, and so the word crisis is more acceptable. Important thing is we want people to call for help. We've got the best uh, uh, professional mental health folks answering the line. It's not, not a 911 operator. You're talking to an actual mental health uh, professional when they call uh, our uh, prevention hotline. Our focus uh, is on treatment for post-traumatic stress, traumatic brain injury, and other psychological and cognitive health requirements, as well as greater collaboration between the departments of defense and VA and providing mental health care. In addition to those major initiatives, the new budget recognizes the tremendous medical responsibilities and financial burdens assumed by veterans caregivers, providing $66 million for specialized training, uh, stipends, health care, and mental health services in the first year alone, and this program will grow. It includes an investment of $270 million for eligible women veterans to address their health care needs wherever they seek care. It provides almost $251 million in operations and maintenance funding for the National Cemetery Administration, allowing us to provide nearly 90% of the veteran population a burial site within 75 miles of their, of their homes. We've been working towards this uh, progressively over time, and in 2012, we'll be able to provide uh, that kind of uh, service to our veterans. 90% uh, will have within 75 miles of where they live, a cemetery. Uh, as you know, there are some places out in the Midwest, uh, uh, out in Idaho, Montana, and that part of the country, uh, there are no national cemeteries in any state. They have to go two or three states over to get uh, uh, to a VA cemetery. We're, gonna, we're working to change that. And finally, the budget continues our outreach to recently separated, severely disabled veterans to tell them about a two-year free extension of their service members' group life insurance coverage and their right to apply for veterans' group life insurance. In 2010, we contacted 1,300 such individuals, resulting in $120 million in issued coverage. So that's sort of a summary. I, I, I apologize for taking you through a, uh, sort of a budget breakdown, but that's important for you to, to understand transparently what we're trying to get done, those five major programs, uh, for our veterans uh, so that you have uh, some sense of uh, our direction. 